Yes. <laughs> All right. So, um, so, so we've got 15 minutes. It's going to be intense. It's going to be fast moving uh, because we've, we've got two masters here in front of us. Multi-platform content is uh, this next segment. Uh, and we're here with Keith Clinksales uh, from Shadow League Digital. Uh, he was named the CEO of Revolt Media recently um, and has developed and produced content across multiple media platforms. Also, uh, the CEO of, I was just mentioning, of Shadow League Digital. You, hear, you wear a lot of hats, uh, clearly, and uh, has, has a, a, a sister or brother uh, organization, NABJ, also has awarded you many a time, too. I've never gotten an award from them. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll work at it. We'll yeah, work we'll work. Okay. So now that we're sitting next, ne next to each other, that'll be great. Uh, you know, this is what I'd like to start with very quickly, if we can. Uh, and who wants, uh, who's got a question for him up front? What do you want to get out of, the, out of this session in the next 15 minutes? Anybody want to shout it out real fast? Uh, what would you like to learn from uh, Keith here today on, on this next uh, segment that we've got here, this next 15 minutes? Workflows. Workflows, one. Anything else? Anything else? What are we missing? What are we missing? Okay, great. Anybody else? Product management. Okay. Any, anybody on this side? Multicultural audience. Ooh, multicultural audience. Okay. Anything else? Communicating a vision to a new staff. Communicating a vision to a new staff. Great. Okay. Well, uh, we've set both of you up here. Uh, are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, Keith, briefly tell us about your bio in two sentences. That was something I didn't mention. And then try to address some of the topics here because they're, they're really great questions here. Okay. Okay. Uh, Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. I, uh, I recently just left uh, Revolt uh, after a, a successful launch of it. It's going well. They just pulled off a very nice conference down in Miami, Florida after three years to right. celebrate its third year anniversary. Uh, many years before I started uh, with Revolt, I started a, a, a sports platform called the Shadow League. Uh, started when I was at ESPN after leaving ESPN. And we've grown that quite nicely and we're, we're uh, working on trying to find different ways to engage in the power, our yeah. culture, and the power of sports. When I first started the Shadow League, it was like, well, Keith, race and sports does not really go together as that well. And then you have things like Colin Kaepernick, and you have the players wearing the shirts for Black Lives Matter, and you had the, uh, the, the uh, women's NBA you know, uh, players, uh, WNBA players getting fined and doing different things, and right. all of a sudden you see it starts to come together. So the, uh, I think the thing I would answer, what, uh, there was a question up top about... Um, uh, multi-platforms or different things. I think the, the, the best ways to explain what's going on in the world of content right now and how things get done, if you look at uh, Issa Rae, you know, uh, you look at the, the Issa Rae situation where she put together, she had put together many, many opportunities of work, but she had one series that she did on YouTube, yeah. uh, Awkward Black Girl, and the Awkward Black Girl not, not only showed her um, ability to write, but it showed her ability to direct and put these things together and cast and really have nice twists to it. I mean, if you if you watch Awkward Black Girl, you know you really got a nice sense of things. And then to see uh, Insecure on HBO, and, and and yes, it's a step up. It's a step up because of the resources and all the different things that she was afforded. But the raw intellect, the humor, the edge of it all came from her using technology uh, in the in the smartest way early. So, so tell us, uh, multi-platform content, uh, what is that uh, in, in two sentences? You, you like the two sentences, huh? Yeah, I, I, got, uh, I got 12 minutes uh, and lots of questions. Yeah, well, I'll no, make sure we... I mean, we... Multi, I mean look, it, right now, nobody makes... Con you used to make content for... This is for newspapers, this is for magazines, this is for television, yeah. and then we have websites. And Now uh, you, you have to make content thinking that you don't know where it's going to show up. Right. You, um, or it will show up everywhere. Or it will show up everywhere. I mean, there's, um, uh, there's a show, I believe, I believe the show is on HBO, is really going to point to it, uh, the John Oliver show. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, Heard about I've it. never yeah. saw it on television. I've only seen it on my phone. You exactly. Know I mean? I've only because I, I get it. I've never seen it live. I don't know, but but when it comes up and I say, oh, there yep. it is. I take 12, 15 minutes of that monologue and I in, in, enjoy it. And that's where a lot of things are. The only content that people tend to uh, have to be appointment for tends to be sports yeah. because you you know, sports and elections, I guess. Right. But past right. that, you know, you, you can kind of, you're, you're kind of very much in control. Shared community experiences mm -hmm. where you want to be there and part of it. Let me build on, on that question though, Richard. Um, so Keith, in, in your experience, 
when you're looking at multi-platforms, are you looking at developing content specifically for a platform? Are you developing once and just sharing it on all platforms? What sort of best practices have you experienced? I think you focus on the story. Like, you don't let the technology lead you to places where you, you don't want to go. You want to focus on a good story. A good story will resonate no matter where it, it goes, you know? Um, and that's what you're trying to make sure you have. Now, the best way to tell that story uh, might vary due to the platforms you're working on, but at the core of what you're working on is the technology. I think what, I think what everything does from broadband on down the line, it empowers more people to go ahead and be able to do things that you haven't seen before. Um, any of you seen a show called Money and Violence on, on YouTube? Yes. Okay. So now, Money and Violence is not, it's, it's not, this is not politically correct, you know, but, uh, but at the same time, it's an it's a excellent show in terms of these guys went out and, you know, told stories of some Brooklyn uh, drug cats and, and, you know, there's violence in it and everything else like that. But the main, the storytelling is incredible, and you get a, a very good look at it. This is, again, showing the power of this, you know, simple uh, 5D cameras, and they, pr they probably use some Samsungs and iPhones in it to, uh, to pull it off, but the whole, the whole series has been very nice, and it was en ended up picked up by Lionsgate. There's many more stories uh, like this, and that, I think that's the opportunity for content that never existed before. Keith, one of the things I've seen, uh, at least uh, out of Silicon Valley, uh, as in the marketing side uh, and storytelling side, is they like journalists. They like hiring ex-journalists to come in and tell stories because the way you theoretically tell stories, sharp, simple, headline, bam, bam, bam but able to add flourishes when possible. Who do you go to, or do you, who do you think has that nice brain power and skill set that can help us handle storytelling on, on multiple platforms? Well, I, I, you go to, you, I always, I do like, you do like journalists, but the people that tell the best stories are the people that are, are, are passionate about whatever subject they're going into. They're, they're going to do the extra work. They're going to find things. So sometimes journalists or people who have been producers before, they get to do things because they have had accomplishments, but they don't feel the, the subject. Someone who really feels the subject and, and can get in and tell that story uh, with the subtle nuances that makes it work. Uh, when you, anytime you spend some time with Blackish, you know, if you spend, you, you watch that show, uh, um, Can You Barris, that, 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 the writing on that show and the nuance of the storytelling is not, it's not like uh, ABC and, and uh, all those people haven't had good storytellers, but this is a specific nuance geared towards the audience. And if everybody else wants to come along, yeah. that's fine. If you learn something along the way, that's fine. I mean, there was, there's, there's, that is the type of thing that really brings this, uh, brings it along, but also gives us access because too many people of color don't get access to those writing rooms. You know, they don't get access to the opportunity to, to make these things happen. They're not you know? there. They're yeah. not there. So, They're not there. And and the writing rooms are important because that's what goes on screen. You know, yeah. um, I saw uh, Key and Peele. They won an award. I forget the award that they won. Uh, and I love Key and Peele, so this is not, not hating on them or anything else like that. But when when uh, when they the guys got the award for they yeah. got an award for writing, you know, all the writers up there they were not. I mean, there wasn't a, a person of color yeah. up there. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I missed them. They could have been light or something like that. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah. But, but 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 there were, yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, and this is not like I'm not one of these people who say okay if you know. Uh, Black people have to be there 100%, uh, or Hispanic people have to be there 100%. But you got to have representation because when something great yeah. like Key and P ha happens, yep. right? Yep. How how else is someone going to learn how to do something? Yeah. You, know? you, you got to you got to be at the table to learn. You I have no idea what you're talking about. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, I want to drill down on you, the question you asked here, Clayton. With the best practice, if you if you have new client here, uh, they come into your office. Okay, what is the single most important, best practice, you're going to tell them. This, this is what you have to do when it comes to multi-platform content. Well, it depends. I don't, I don't, I rarely, I don't really come looking for multi-platform content. I, I come to make sure we do good content first. Uh -huh. And, and the, the, the main thing I try to do is not miss. I, I, um, uh, the, the greatest fear that producers, anybody who's producing something has, that someone's going to walk in your office with something great and you're going to miss on it. You know, um, a long time ago, um, don't miss the story is what you're saying. Don't miss, don't miss, don't yeah. miss anything. Don't uh, bury the lead. Uh, yeah. uh, Aaron Magruder came in my office many years ago, many years ago. 
and he had this thing called the Boondocks, and it was cute. You know, I said, yeah, yeah. no, seriously, I said, it was cute. It was a nice cartoon, and and it was funny, and and um, and it wasn't at the time. It wasn't animated. It was uh, just a, a, a static cartoon, and I liked it. Uh, but me and one of his partners were having legal uh, legal challenges. Not uh, who's going to own what or whatever. I, and I'm like, look, this is vibe, baby. This is you're not coming to vibe and tell you know and. It was a miss because I, I didn't get it, you know, and then it went, it went somewhere else and then eventually it went to uh, uh, Turner and then he turned into an animated cartoon and it did four or five seasons and it was uh, exceptional and it was one of those things. So when I sit around at night, it's a miss. I remember Quincy uh, telling me, I'll never forget this, telling me about L Luther Vandross. Everybody remembers their misses, you know. So Quincy had Luther Vandross, you know, slept. Missed, you know, and he'll and and after all these successes, all the trophies, thriller on the wall, you know, yeah. writing for Frank Sinatra, he'll he'll go into in depth discussion about Luther Vandross, you know, and uh, uh, because it was a miss and it's an important miss. So, uh, when you're paying attention to these things, you're paying attention not to like all the different, and, and is there somebody that's coming through the door that I might be missing on, yeah, and that's, and, that, and and they might not have the right thing for you right now. But there's some reason why you got to figure out a way to work with them. Let me let me let me ask you a little bit more of a wonky way of looking at it. In today's environment, we have a lot of data that's surrounding um, sort of our audience, so it makes it a little bit more, I think, um, maybe in some ways easier to pick the right content for the right platform or the right time or the right whatever. And you coming out with uh, the experience that you had through ESPN and Revolt and even all the way back to your magazine days. What role has data played in the creative decisions that you've been able to make? Data helps you target the markets better. Data helps you find out more about what you believe the market might like. But data, if data could pick it for you, there would be, there'd be no producers. There'd just be computers, you know what I mean? Uh, there's, there's a gut, and there's some things you just don't understand why they work, you know? And I think you have to have the... Uh, the courage to understand that you might not understand it, you know. Um, future, the, the artist future. I I don't understand future, you know. But but you know, uh, you know what I mean. But you know, it works. So it's not my spot to go ahead and say, oh no, that's you know, uh, that's you know, the data says or something like right. that. Um, the way things are, data consumption is changing so rapidly; it's being affected by the digital curve. So. The old ways of consumption, you can't use those markers against uh, nowadays because radio is different, uh, how people find out about things are different, you know, what makes things burst, uh, you yeah. know. Uh, so well, what, what data point do you watch? What's your favorite data point? It, uh, there's no favorite. That, that There's definitely no favorite. You, okay. have, you, uh, you learn them different based on what you're trying to trying to achieve, you know. The, the thing that you try to find, though, is the people that... that uh, uh, are, are bubbling up under, and there's a lot of uh, chatter about. I do like when there's substantial social media chatter. I do like finding things that uh, are burning for whatever reason, you know. Right. And that, but but that is not a perfect science, you know. Is, is the very title of this tech talk antiquated? With the multi-platform content. <laughs> I I don't think it's antiquated. I I, I think that. I when don't will it be? You think then? I think con it's just content. I mean, the goal yeah. is content. And I think for us, for people of color especially, you have an election going on, making sure we have more broadband in all the nation's community, the, the same way you have water when you turn it on and things like that, that is probably the most important uh, situation going. The, yeah. the, uh, the things that kids, young kids will tell you, under 18 years old, uh, or over 18, but young people will tell you about things because they know how to get that information, yeah. it's kind of staggering, you know. Yeah. And and things that you think you know, um, you know, you don't really know the way they know it at such a young age. So that's the if if it was anything, your title of the conference, the whole broadband effect, like broadband now, and and this election, it's important that we don't let that. You know, these debates have gone on, and we've talked about a whole bunch of things in these debates, right? We have not talked a lot about broadband and internet delivery to. Um, you know, to, to communities. Oh, we, we, we could put a long list together. I just, I, Clayton, I know, is about to turn the, the clock on us here, but uh, somebody asked, what don't we know that we need to know? What, what don't we know that we, that we should know that you know? Yeah, really. Yeah, come on. <laughs> well, That's what I want to know. Yes. Well, <laughs> come on. Uh, I, I, I mean, just... um, 
Yeah, Let us know. The lottery numbers. <laughs> yeah, the Tell truth us of the that lottery question numbers. Is I, I, not, it's not so much predictive, but I, I do think uh, just because it's easy to get things because of technology, it does not mean the work is not there, you know? Um, uh, you know, I, I started with the ISSA example, so I'll go back to it. Uh, ISSA used technology very well to get her product out, but make no mistake, the work the work was there. The work away from the computer yep. uh, is there. And that and that's the thing that we can often miss because it's so easy to get something out, you know. Yep. Or you listen to designer. If I listen to designer, I said I can I can def I can do that, you know. Um, but you know, it's easy to it's easy to go ahead. <laughs> it's easy to go ahead and think that these things are easy because of the technology that exists. It's the the level of work that's required to break through is even more now because the barriers to entry for everybody is lower, you know, and 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 that's not a bad thing. The barriers no. to entry going lower because of technology. That means your game has got to be much better. You know, they they talk about how you know Michael Jordan was great, so just you know, let's not get but but uh, Michael. Right now, the NBA, you have more players that are playing at a level that are might not be Jordan like, but up there, you know, than was in his day, and that's that's the beauty of the. The way things move, you get more players because they see things and all that kind of stuff. Same thing with technology. Same things with uh, media. Same things yep. with entertainment. Well, you're our Jordan today. Uh, when we come back for the uh, fourth annual Next Gen Tech and Media Conference, what's the word that we should be thinking about now to prepare ourselves for next year? I think I execu just love oh. Richard Louis. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> just love him. I think it's execution. I think okay. I, I think uh, I cannot tell you how many times I've had people. Talk about things. You know, um, talking about things is good, and how you're going to talking about how you're going to do it is is phenomenal. But doing it, executing it, and taking the hits that come because when you try to do something, you know, you're going to fail. You're going to have some bumps. You're going to have some grinds. But to to uh, to see that yeah. is uh, important, and and also understand the power of your marketplace. I mean, you have to understand the power of your marketplace. At no, at no time, you know, if you're Hispanic. Uh, by 2020, half 50 percent of all millennials will be Hispanic. Right now, it's one out of three. You know, it is no question. You know, and if you don't have a Hispanic friend, you know, you should make sure you make one. You know, uh, <laughs> because that's that's the game. You know, that all moving right. forward. And for people of color, black for black people, I mean, the influence that black people have, you know, you know, they far far outweighs the weight that we have in the, in the marketplace. The level of influence that you right. have is completely crazy. So using that influence, using that style, you know, all this stuff with uh, black girls' magic, it's not black girls' magic. It, it, this is the power of this audience. This audience is supremely powerful. Clay, can I just do a smattering of questions here and he'll, he'll answer it all at once? Yeah, let's do a, a quick round, a okay. quick round here, and then we're going to... Why are you rushing me? The other guy was uh, like, why, uh, why do I get rushed? Well, yeah. all right. For, uh, for, for, uh, uh, first off, who's Latino in here? <laughs> All right, so uh, we got two. All right, so everybody, they're going to be very busy uh, today. Very busy, very busy, very busy. Yeah, quick question. Uh, Steve, lo lo glad to see you. You've been uh, uh, a stalwart and a person on the front line for a long time. It is true that everyone has all these uh, photos and videos and everything on their phones, so it's ubiquitous, it's everywhere, it's got a voice. But converting that to the business is not the easiest thing, and I'd like to get your perspective of how that has changed over the years related to capital. How you can do this, is it easier now than when you were working on Vibe and trying to do, what does it look like to you? Is it easier now than it was before when we take a look at where, how media has changed in, in recent years? Capital. And then access to capital. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, and then the question in the back in red, and yeah. you answer them all at once. And, and, the, and all the way in the back of the red. That's what, that's what went work. Sorry. Go ahead. Payback. Hi, Keith. Um, I met you in ninety. I met you in the mid nineties um, when I worked at Time Incorporated as a Levin scholar, and you were running by. Um, I was fourteen then. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Fast forward. I was speaking to my brother, telling me he needs to come to this. Um, if nothing else, to meet you. He asked why. And I told him about the conversation I had with you over 20 years ago. Um, and he's, and then he said, what was his name again? And I mentioned your name. And he said, oh, I know Keith. He's had similar conversations with me as well. Um, 
my brother's name is Ismail Calligraphist. He's a photographer um, for Revolt. My question to you is this. It's been 20 years, and in that time, technology has changed, and it's definitely made our lives a lot easier. How are you able to stay relevant, accessible, powerful, and still have these conversations with people like us? Like, and for long periods of time, how are you doing this with your time and using technology to do that? Okay, first question. Is it, is it, is it I'll, get, I'll get the first question. On the Capitol, is it easier now or than it was? No, it's, uh, it's, it's worse, yeah. Um, and it'll, it'll remain worse because um, it's harder for us to get in banking. It's harder for us to get, like media requires, it's not just the content. It's the advertising, it's the distribution, it's the financing of it, all those things together. So while we're killing the game in the making of the content, uh, when you go to an a advertising agency, you go to pick any advertising agency, major advertising, except for an African-American one, of course, um, the number of people of color has diminished substantially. So mm -hmm. if you don't have if you don't have the uh, dollars to support it, you know, if if blackish was on BET, would it be potentially as successful? And the answer is, I don't know, not because it's not a good show, but because you don't know how people are going to see it from an advertising perspective. You know, it's it's still the same show. So it's harder. And it'll remain harder uh, unless we get our execution down and remain somewhat political. Uh, to your question. Um, Feeling old? Yeah, getting, yeah, yeah, getting yeah. old, growing old. Uh, the main thing is I stick to, you know, Quincy was so good to start with because he always told me that media, the business of media is nothing but a song and a story. That's all it is. It's, it's a song and a story. So he's like, look. Uh, you know we got the songs. No question, we got the songs, and and we damn sure have the stories. You know, and being able to take those things together and put them put them wherever you go, that is the question of it. So now the things your brother being a photographer, now you have people who can be videographers. You can you the whole thing has changed. You know the power of Instagram and Snapchat and all these things to bring your tools together. You just have more tools, but the core elements of a good story are still very much the same. And that's and then the way you stay relevant also is by listening. That's the hardest thing, especially after you've been, uh, you've been, I've been in top positions for a good part of my career. So if you don't listen to these folks, real folks, uh, you'll, you'll miss, you'll, you can get corny easy, you know what I mean? So uh, you have to have that, that ability. Clayton, I've got three or four more I hands. I think we can take two questions maximum. I'm going to leave it up to Richard to figure out who those two are. All right, so your hand was up, your hand was up, and I'm going to cheat. I'm going to do one more over here. Okay. <laughs> don't, 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 don't ask so quickly. Don't ask quickly. Don't ask quickly. Go ahead. You go first. Fast, so, though. Something I've been paying a lot of attention to is, like, the attention economy and, and thinking about um, multi-platform and all of the different content that's out there. Um, people's attention is spread so much thinner. Yeah. Um, how, what are your thoughts on being able to get through and, and I guess just capturing um, attention? How to get through the attention of common. Not yet? No, go, go ahead. Oh, wait, I can't do so. I got no, you should get, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll help you through. I'll help you through. Go ahead. Hi, my name is... Just go fast for me. Okay. Uh, my name is C.I. Capers and I'm the founder and CEO of the Hip Hop Film Festival and Hip Hop Film Festival Television. Um, one of the things that we do is we, we try to change the narrative. With you being in charge of and head, head of revolt and things of that nature, how does one get a meeting with you to converge on minds? I'd like an appointment. How to converge minds, she wants to meet you, okay? Yeah, and then over here, then we got to right. so, so influencers matter, um, but so does design and so does ownership. So how do we bridge the gap between the conversation on influencing to the conversation in, in, to be, in becoming owners. Owners, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, you got that. I'm, I'm going to start back. Yeah. You become owners by making sure whatever you do, at, you, you try to make sure you own at the beginning. You know, Things I've owned in my career, I didn't own all of them. I owned, when I got an opportunity to own, you, you have to go at it. you got to make it a priority. And you sometimes you have to make sacrifices. Uh, when Vibe changed ownership from Time Inc. to a group of folks with Quincy and some other folks, uh, at that time for me to come with it, it was one of my first times I was able to get ownership by you know, asking and to go. It's not going to come up and say, oh, here's your ownership. You've got to go and uh, <laughs> you, you, you got to go and get it. And you have to be prepared for the other side. The other side is 
no, we don't think you're that valuable to it. So you, uh, you're not going to own it. You can stay, but you're not going to own it. So those, that's that's the that's a tough thing, and it's a personal thing. But now uh, it, it's a little easier to do those things. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm not at Revolt anymore. You can still meet with me. I'll gladly talk to you. I will. But uh, uh, but I'm at LinkedIn. You email me or hit me at LinkedIn, and I'll I'll put you with the right person at Revolt, and you can talk to me anytime. Okay. I'm on LinkedIn. And attention um, economy. Uh, this is the easiest one. That's why I say it. Just, just be good. Whatever's good, you're going to watch. Uh, Luke, Luke Cage, I'm like, uh, I went through that. Uh, like, uh, uh, I mean, I had things to do. I had meetings to have. You know, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm in Luke Cage, you know. Then, <laughs> then I messed around, and um, I, I looked at this show with Billy Bob Thornton on Amazon called uh, Goliath. Yeah, you know. So this show, Goliath, was like eight episodes, 51 minutes. I mean, I went five episodes on that straight. I mean, because I, th I just thought it was uh, phenomenal. So good, good works, you know. And, um, uh, and then I'm like, I'm behind on Westworld, which I know is going to be good. You know, I'm behind on all these things. So the, th the, the Stranger Things, I've been hearing about it. Yeah, yeah. Th this show's out there. So everything, what, what gets your attention is what is good, you know, and what works. Yeah, you need like four eyeballs to catch up with all that stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> Multi-platform content, Keith Clinksales, thank you so much. Thank you. How about that?